In a groundbreaking leap that blurs the line between biology and technology, the world's first computer, powered by human brain cells, has become a reality. Now, this isn't science fiction. It's happening right now in a Swiss laboratory, and it's poised to revolutionize the way we think about computing, artificial intelligence, and even our own humanity. To understand the significance of this breakthrough, we first need to grasp the concept of biocomputing. Biocomputing, or wetware computing as it's sometimes called, is an emerging field that sits at the fascinating intersection of biology, computer science, and artificial intelligence. Instead of relying on traditional silicon-based processors, biocomputing utilizes living biological tissues, in this case, human brain cells, to perform computational tasks. It's a bit like creating a living, thinking computer. The potential of this technology is immense promising to address some of the most pressing challenges in modern computing, particularly in terms of energy efficiency and processing power. At the forefront of this biocomputing revolution is FinalSpark, a Swiss startup that has developed what they call the Neuro Platform. This platform is nothing short of revolutionary. It's the world's first online platform that provides remote access to biological neurons in vitro. In simpler terms, they've created a system where living brain cells can be used to process information, and researchers can access this system from anywhere in the world. The heart of the platform consists of 16 human brain organoids. These organoids are tiny, three-dimensional masses of brain tissue grown in a lab. Now, they're not full brains, of course, but they do mimic certain aspects of brain structure and function. FinalSpark has found a way to connect these organoids to computer systems, creating a bridge between biology and technology that opens up entirely new possibilities for computing. Now, let's take a closer look at how the Neuro Platform actually works. The system relies on a complex architecture that combines hardware, software, and biological elements, hence the term wetware. The key components of this system are four multi-electrode arrays, or MEAs. Each MEA houses four brain organoids, and each organoid is interfaced with eight electrodes. These electrodes serve a dual purpose. They can both stimulate the organoids and record their activity. The data from these organoids is transmitted through digital analog converters, which sample the biological signals at an impressive rate of 30,000 times per second, with 16-bit resolution. This allows for incredibly precise measurements of the organoids' electrical activity. To keep the brain organoids alive and functioning, the system includes a microfluidic life support system. This ensures that the organoids receive the nutrients that they need and are maintained in the right conditions. Also, there are monitoring cameras to allow researchers to visually inspect the organoids. Finally, there's a software stack that ties everything together. This allows the researchers to input data, control the system, and interpret the output from the organoids. It's a complex system, but it is designed to be user-friendly, allowing researchers from various fields to conduct experiments and push the boundaries of biocomputing. Let's delve a bit deeper into the biological components of the neural platform. The brain organoids used in this system are developed from human-induced pluripotent stem cell-derived neural stem cells, or NSCs. These are cells that have been reprogrammed to have the potential to develop into various types of brain cells. The process of creating these organoids involves several steps. First, there's an expansion phase, where the NSCs are allowed to multiply. Then, the formation of the 3D structure is induced. This is then followed by differentiation steps, where factors like GDNF and BDNF are used to guide the development of the cells. Finally, there's a maturation phase. The result is what's called a four-brain organoid, or an FO. These are compact spheroids with a diameter of around 500 micrometers. While they're far from being complete brains, they do exhibit some of the cellular organization and functionality of certain brain regions. One of the most exciting aspects of the Neuro Platform is its potential for energy efficiency. FinalSpark claims that bioprocessors like this consume a million times less power than traditional digital processors. If this claim holds true, it could have massive implications for the future of computing and its environmental impact. To put this into perspective, let's consider the energy consumption of current artificial intelligence systems. Training a single large language model like GPT-3, which powers many AI chatbots, reportedly required about 10 gigawatt hours of energy. That's roughly 6,000 times more energy than the average European citizen uses in an entire year. If bioprocessors can indeed deliver similar computational power at a fraction of the energy cost, it could dramatically reduce the environmental footprint of advanced computing and AI systems. 
This is particularly crucial, as we rely more and more on these technologies in our daily lives. Of course, using living tissue for computing comes with its own unique challenges. One of the most significant is the lifespan of the biological components. Unlike silicon chips, which can last for years or even decades, the neuronal structures in bioprocessors have a limited lifespan. Initially, FinalSpark's MEAs only lasted for a few hours. However, through continued refinement of their system, they've managed to extend the lifespan of the organoids to around 100 days. While this is a significant improvement, it's still far shorter than the lifespan of traditional computer components. This limited lifespan means that the neural platform is currently most suitable for experiments that run for several months at most. However, as research in this field progresses, we may see further improvements in the longevity of these biological processors. And the great news is, FinalSpark isn't keeping this groundbreaking technology to themselves. They've given access to the neural platform to nine institutions, with the goal of spurring further research and development in bioprocessing. Their ultimate aim is pretty ambitious, to create the world's first, fully functional, living processor. The interest in this technology is clear. Already, three dozen universities have expressed interest in gaining access to the neural platform. For educational institutions looking to conduct research using this system, FinalSpark offers subscriptions at $500 per month for each user. This open approach to innovation could accelerate progress in the field of biocomputing. By allowing researchers from various institutions to experiment with the platform, FinalSpark is fostering a collaborative environment that could lead to breakthrough discoveries. The development of the neuro platform and similar biocomputing technologies could have far-reaching implications for the fields of artificial intelligence and computing as a whole. One of the most significant potential impacts is in energy efficiency. As we mentioned earlier, the energy consumption of current AI systems is staggering. The daily word generation from platforms like ChatGPT alone is estimated to consume between 450 and 600 billion joules of energy per day. This level of energy use is not sustainable in the long term, especially as our reliance on AI continues to grow. Biocomputers, with their potentially million-fold reduction in energy consumption, could offer a solution to this problem. They could allow for the development of AI systems that are just as powerful as current models, but with a fraction of the environmental impact. Moreover, biocomputers might be able to tackle certain types of problems more effectively than traditional computers. The human brain, after all, is incredibly efficient at tasks like pattern recognition and adaptive learning, areas where even our most advanced AI systems still struggle. By harnessing actual brain cells for computing, we might be able to create systems that more closely mimic the capabilities of the human brain. As exciting as the neuro platform is, it's important to remember this technology is still in its early stages. There are many challenges to overcome before biocomputers become a mainstream technology. One of the main hurdles is scalability. While the current system uses 16 brain organoids, scaling this up to the billions of neurons found in a human brain is a monumental task. Researchers will need to find ways to create larger, more complex networks of organoids while still maintaining precise control over the entire system. Yet another challenge is stability. As we mentioned, the current organoids have a lifespan of about 100 days. In order for biocomputers to become practical for everyday use, this lifespan will need to be significantly extended. There are also ethical considerations to grapple with. The use of human brain cells for computing raises questions about the nature of consciousness and the ethical implications of creating thinking machines. As this technology progresses, these are issues that society will need to address. Despite these challenges, the potential of biocomputing is enormous. If we can overcome the current limitations, we might see biocomputers becoming a reality in various applications. They could be used in scientific research, helping us to better understand the human brain and neurological disorders. They might find applications in drug discovery, allowing for more efficient screening of potential treatments. And of course, they could revolutionize the field of artificial intelligence, leading to more efficient and potentially more capable AI systems. As we look to the future, it's clear that the line between biology and technology is becoming increasingly blurred. What do you think about this groundbreaking development? Are you excited about the possibilities? Or do you have your concerns? We'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment down below. If you found this video mind-blowing and want to stay updated on the latest in cutting-edge technology, why not join our community? 
hit that subscribe button to ensure you never miss out on our future explorations of science and tech. And hey, while you're at it, give that bell icon a click too. It'll make sure you get notified as soon as we upload new content.